Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to install and set up your Shimano Altegra R8050 DI2 rear derailleur. So one of those. So I'll go ahead, I'll run through the steps. Right, so here we have the derailleur. So I'll just show you the adjustment screws while I've got it off, just to make them clear to you what they are. Obviously this is a short cage version, they do a medium cage as well, that doesn't make any difference to the setup. Now the mounting bolt to go onto your frame and your derailleur hanger is there, it's a 5mm hex head. And then obviously you need torque wrench 5mm with a 5mm hex head to torque that up to 8 to 10 Nm on the mounting bolt. And then we've got the B screw there, the top, very top one, and you've got the high and low screws just there, 2mm hex heads for all of those. Right, so using your 5mm hex head to screw it to the derailleur hanger, what you want to do is put some anti seize on the thread as well before you go ahead and screw it in. So, obviously, you can see we've already got the wire coming out of the frame ready to mount it to, so that's already been done. So when you're screwing this on to the frame, make sure that the tab sticking out on your derailleur hanger actually hits the tab there on the derailleur. Make sure they're actually touching one another when you're tightening up. So if you just get the bolt started first, and then start screwing it in and just keep your eye looking down the back here make sure that they're touching just as you screw it in they're together you can just push down on that if you want to as well and then just pinch that up and then get your torque wrench out and just torque that up like I said to 8 to 10 newton meters that's the actual derailleur mounted on the frame Right, so next I'll just go ahead and hook up the wire to the derailleur. So make sure that's plugged in properly. Right, so as you see, we got the wire plugged in and we've done nothing else. It's set the derailleurs just as it was out of the box. It's still set down to the 11 tooth at the back. So Obviously, depending on what size rear cassette you're using, you could be using a 25 on the back, 28, 32, 34. It just depends what you've got on there. Now, what what you're looking for is the derailleur. You can do this without the chain on there, because then you can see the actual guide pulley bear. But if you're looking directly from behind, you want to get the guide pulley lined up with almost like the outside edge of the 11 tooth at the back so it's in line if you look in you should be able to line it up because what happens with it with these di2 derailleurs is they over adjust and they come back again so for it, when it's coming down, if you, you look, once you set it, you'll be able to see it without a chain on there. It changes gear and it goes past it. And then a microsecond later, it comes back in line again. So it just goes past and then back. So the derailleur, the jockey wheels go that way and then they come back in line. So over adjustment on it. So if you get it in line then, with the, roughly the outside edge of the of the teeth on there and to do that what you want to do is if yours isn't anywhere lined up so you've got your high screw there so all that does is adjust so if you turn it clockwise like so it's moving the derailleur the smallest the guide pulley at the top is going over that way so yours might come out of the box set up so it's in line with say the second 
sprocket in. I'll try and zoom in on it a little bit for you to make it easier to see. Because it's hard to see because the wire is the connector's right in the way of where the actual guide pulley is, so it's difficult to spot it. So, like I said, boy, yours might come out of the box in line with the second cog, say, second sprocket, so it's nowhere near in line with the 11 tooth. So if that's the case, then you want to turn it going anti-clockwise, so it brings it back over, as you can see, it's moving it over. So, what you want to do then is set it as best you can in line with like the outside edge, like I said, of the smallest sprocket. So once you've done that, and you're happy with that, that's the hoy screw adjusted. Now obviously these being electronic railers, unlike the manual versions, pushing on the railer doesn't do anything. So you can't move it by hand any in any way because it's obviously got a motor inside it and it doesn't move like that. So what you want to do then to set up the low adjustment, which is obviously the largest at the back, wherever yours is, 25, 32, whatever you've got on there, then you can go up to your shifter and just shift normally as you would. And make sure, obviously, when you're doing these shifting things, make sure you've got a fully charged battery before you start, just to eliminate any problems with that. So just go up to your shifter and shift across. So we shifted right across, checking also that we had all the available gears at the same time. Make sure we had each one and there wasn't any missing. So then, being as it's now over here, obviously the drailing moves, flops around like so, you can just hold it up so as it's touching, so hold it forward, and then look at the largest at the back and make sure that it's in line, that the top guide wheel is in line with the largest at the back. So if it's not, say if yours has stopped somewhere over here, the second one in or something, then the low screw, get on the low screw and if you turn the low screw clockwise it moves it this way and if you turn it anti-clockwise it moves it towards the spokes. So you want to get it underneath the spot on underneath the largest chain ring I mean the largest cog on your cassette make sure it's in line that's the high adjustment done and then what you do then so obviously what you do is you can set up your B adjustment screw there. So I'll go ahead and I'll just move the camera and show you the easier way to do that without even putting the chain on there. Right, so the next step is the B screw there. So that's the top one, the high and lower down here. So it's the one right up here. What this does is just adjust the gap between the, the guide wheel and the largest sprocket on the back, whatever you've got fitted to yours. Bike could be a 25, could be a 28, whatever you've got. So to adjust that, without even putting a chain on or anything to get it set up, is what you want to do is to adjust it, make sure that the drail is pushed forward, as in like that, not hanging down like this, make sure it's pushed forward so it's actually touching the screw there is actually touching on the stop behind there that's sticking down. 
there's no good having it hanging in mid-air it's got to be pushed forward so it's touching so when it's touching you can make the adjustment now the easiest way to do it is get yourself a 8mm hex head big one like so and put it there and as you can see there's too much gap there that's far too much so what I'll do is I'll adjust that there so as the gap decreases there so just locate your B screw and then turn it anti-clockwise and just keep pushing on the rail at the same time and you'll see so it's always touching the screw the gap's getting smaller so just hold it in place I say don't let it hang just hold it forward and then put that there like so and you want it so as the allen key hex head will just fit between the two sets of teeth so if there's a little bit of play there a little gap you can just tweak it a little bit a touch more not a lot just so as they're tight like so but it's got to be when the dry is pushed forward and they're just about fit in there like so just fits in so I'll leave it at that then what I'll do is I'll just go up to the shifter and I'll shift back down right back to the bottom so I'm on the 11 and then go back up the cassette just f uh, 5 so you're up on the 5th sprocket so 5 clicks or 4 clicks because you're already on this one so you want to end up on the 5th one up so I'll position the rear derailleur in that position and then I'll put the chain on so get your chain on so around the fifth one in and around your smallest on the chain ring at the front wherever that may be whatever you chain ring you've got on there right so as you can see I've got the chain on it's in the smallest chain ring at the front and it's on the fifth sprocket up on the cassette at the moment so that's all I've done so now I'll just go ahead I'll show you how to put it in the adjustment mode up by the handlebars Right, so when it comes to making adjustments with your shifter, the fine adjustments for the rear right here, now what you want to do is if you've got a unit like so, this just happens to be the RS910 unit, this could be mounted in the bar end or in the down tube of the frame, if you've got one of these. If you've got the EW90 unit, the A junction box on the stem, the bottom of the stem, then it's the same thing applies. You've got a button on it, then the battery indication light there, and next to it there's a plus and minus with the light there so that's the one you're after is that one nothing to do with the battery at all so what you want to do is just push and hold the button until the light comes on there it go so it's lit up now the red light by the plus and minus sign and then what that means is by pressing the button obviously you can make adjustments either way up or down so down using this button there and then up using the longer button there. So you've got 16 increments one way and 16 increments the other way on the adjustment. So it's not in infinite adjustment, you can only go 16 steps one way, 16 back the other way. So for the adjustment, so that's just how that works. So what I'll do is if you turn your crank just normally like you would so you're pedaling I haven't turned on any I haven't pressed or held the button yet or anything I'm just seeing what it's like so as you can hear it sounds quite good in that position what I'll do is I'll adjust it wrongly just to show you so you can hear the difference so I'm just going to adjust it by pressing and holding getting the, the red light on so I'll do that. Right, the red light's just come on, so now all the Adralia does is when you press the shifters, 
up and down like the shifters were is just up and down adjustments 16 each way so you've got 16 adjustments either way to make so what I'll do is I'll adjust it so I'm coming back down this way towards the 11 until it starts sounding rough so the fourth one up is adjusting it down towards the fourth sprocket so if I just keep pressing it, as you can hear, it changed on its own there just by me adjusting it down too much and it's changed down to the fourth one. So once it's changed down to the fourth one, if you click it back up with the opposite button, about four clicks. So one, two, three, four. That's four clicks, it hasn't changed up yet. That's four, five, Six, nine, ten, ten. It just went up then. So as it's just changed up, you could probably afford to go a couple more. So that's about ten clicks. So I just went up then. Eleven, twelve. And that's running nice and quiet on there now. So once you're happy with that, it's quiet. It's running in the middle of the gear. It's not sounding. It's not sounding rough at all or not skipping or anything like that. It's running nice and quiet. Then, if you just press and hold, if you just press and hold the button, just quickly, so just press and hold it, and then what'll happen is, the lights are both flashed together, so that's the battery light and the red light that was on, they just blink a few times together, and then they go out. That means you're back to normal shifting mode, so the derailleur works as it should, as though you was riding the bike. So once you're in that, you can just go ahead and check the gears. So, So as you can see there, we had the gears going up to the largest sprocket and then we come all the way down to the lowest there. So like I showed, so we've got all the gears and they're all working as they should. The front chain ring now is on the largest at the front because as you come down here, you'll be cross-chaining too much anyway. So what you want to do is make sure that it's changed over onto the largest to the front when you're down here. Just to set it up, you can run through the gears a couple of times just to make sure they're okay. But by setting up the high and low screw, like I showed before, I even put the chain on there. And then adjusting the B screw so the gap for the chain to pass through is all good. Then all you got to do is put it on the fifth one in, like I showed. If it's noisy, then you can adjust it. Obviously, if you just keep on adjusting it one way or the other, then it will change down. So if you downshift with the red light on, if you downshift so many times, it will change down to the fourth one in. So what you want to do then is change up, pressing it again, clicking it up, however many times and as soon as it changes up to the fifth one then just go a few more clicks just after it initially changes go a couple more clicks so it's nice and quiet like I just did and then as you can see then all you do is press and hold the button until you see both lights flash together and then they go out then that means it's back in normal shifting mode and what you got to do is keep your eye on that red LED. Make sure it's on when you're making them adjustments to the, uh, the micro adjustments there. Because it can easily go out without you realising that light. And then suddenly you press the button and you go up, a, you press the 
to click it thinking you're going to micro adjust it and suddenly it changes gear up or down but it's very simple to set up you just do it in that fifth one there and as you can see it's working I'll just show you again in a second just so you can see it so it's in the largest at the front the smallest there Now, change down to the smallest at the front, so obviously you'd be cross chain too much. So change down to the smallest to check the rest of them. Like that. And then we're still in the smallest and we just go across. And then change up to the largest. Put it on the largest. And then check the others. So there you have it, all installed, all up and running, exactly how it should be, very easy to do. Right guys, so there's the uh, steps complete for you. Now one thing to remember is, make sure you've got your battery charged up before you start, or plug it in while you're making the adjustments, because you can actually plug it in and have it on charge while you're doing the adjustments themselves doesn't matter if it's plugged in so that's one thing to point out and also remember you can go ahead and update and go check for updates on the uh, e-tube with the e-tube software and that to make sure that the drailers are all up to date and everything and the overall systems all up to the current spec just in case you bought a drailer it could have been sat around for a long time and it's not been updated so it's worth checking that as well so I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle-related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.